Hello students, welcome to this channel and welcome to this video in which we will be studying about the units of memory. In the previous lectures, we have been studying about the basics of computer, the CPU, the input output devices and today we will be focusing on computer memory. This is chapter 1 of your NCRT books that I have taken from the NCRT website. Okay, So, uh, starting with what is computer memory and why do we need it? So, computer memory is a place that stores any kind of data and instructions that are required to process in, uh, to process any um, uh, or to perform any task. Okay, so uh, basically, whenever you give any instruction to the CPU and the CPU requires some data to perform that task and execute that instruction, then this data and instruction is first stored in the computer memory for processing before it can be used for processing by the CPU okay now uh, when I refer to the memory I am referring to the primary memory that is a part of the CPU so in the previous lectures we discussed that CPU consists of three main components the ALU the control unit and the primary memory now although the primary memory can be of two types RAM and ROM but here from now on, whenever I will be referring to the memory, I basically mean the primary memory that uh, is present within the CPU. Okay. Now, uh, the primary memory or the memory is used for temporary storage of data. Uh, as long as the power is on, when I see, as I just said, that the primary memory can either be RAM or it can be ROM. Okay. So, uh, uh, RAM basically stores information in a temporary form as long as the power is on the data instruction and any kind of content will be retained. ROM is uh, a permanent storage but it is a very small uh, amount of storage compared to the, uh, the storage that is available in the form of external secondary memory. Okay, the secondary memory is also known as the secondary storage devices that comprises of the hard disk, the pen drives and any external uh, memory that you attach from to the computer from outside. Okay, so uh, today in this lecture we will be talking about the primary memory that is present within the CPU. Okay, which is used to store the data and instructions for processing. Now, as I mentioned in the previous lectures as well, anything that you feed into the computer is converted into a binary form. So, computer cannot understand your human language like English, the numbers, all the numbers after 2 cannot be understood by the computer. Computer can only understand these two digits which are 0 and 1 and since uh, only two digits are uh, uh, understood by the computer. The computer is also known as the binary system or it uses these binary numbers or the binary digits. So, any input that you give into the computer is converted into binary digits whether it is an alphabet, whether it is any other number, it is converted into a form of binary digits. Okay. And binary digits form the basic unit of memory. So, 0 and 1 are the smallest units of memory. And these units are known as bits. Okay. So, uh, when you break down binary digit uh, and see when I write like this binary digit. So, when you combine these two words in a short form binary and digits. So, you can write it like bits. So, 0 and 1 are known as bits and these are the smallest units of memory, the basic units of memory. So, this is a very important thing that you must remember throughout this class also and if you are trying to pursue computer science, bits refer to 0 and 1 which is the smallest and basic unit of memory. Okay. Now, as I told you that any input is converted in the form of zeros and ones and it consists of multiple groups of zeros and one and any combination that can be formed by zeros and ones. So, when you group together multiple bits, that means when you use a, a group of bits in any particular combination, then that, that group is referred to as words. Okay. 
so any group of bits is referred to as word now that word can either be a four bit word that means the length of the word can be four bits four bits means either of the 16 combination 0000 0001 and so on till 1111 so there can be 16 possible combinations that can be formed using zeros and ones using four bits so a word that means a group of bits that comprises of four bits is known as a nibble okay this is the smallest word not the smallest unit smallest unit is the bit the smallest word is known as a nibble which consists of four bits now a word comprising of eight bits is known as the byte now byte is also very important a two nibble word is also what we call a byte okay so you have bits bits consist of only two digits the zero and one when you combine four bits you get a nibble and when you combine two nibbles you get a byte sorry uh, when you combine two nibbles you come you get a byte so here i'll write two so this is a nibble and two nibbles gives you a byte so now in the short form you must be very careful byte is represented generally using the capital b okay so uh, uh, now that the examples that you have, that are given here you can see these are a group of eight bits so a group means it's a word now a word of bits that uh, consist of eight bits will form a byte okay so this is very important paragraph of your computer science book and your computer science chapter the first chapter you must remember it because any further calculation in terms of memory will be in the form of bits and bytes or nibbles okay now further coming up and grouping these bits and bytes into higher forms or into bigger chunks of memory see uh, the amount of memory that is available these days is much bigger it has to be grouped further and further standardization has to be provided so uh, the bigger chunks of memory are generally in the form of kilobytes or megabytes and gigabytes terabytes that have been specified here so uh, when you combine 1024 bytes together that means 2 raised to power 10 bytes form 1 kilobyte which is also known as 1 kb in short form okay then when you combine 1024 kb you form 1 megabyte 1 mb as it is mentioned here combining 1024 mb gives you 1 gigabyte and so on so this table is also important in the because it can be used uh, for conversion generally if you are asked any mathematical or calculation related questions uh, regarding memory then sometimes you are asked to convert from one measurement unit into another so you must remember the conversion will always be in the terms of 1024 okay so 1 kb is 1024 bytes one uh, zettabyte is 1024 exabytes and so on okay so in this lecture we learned two major important things that are very important i'm repeating it so uh, firstly whenever we are referring to computer memory we are referring to the primary memory present inside the computer and why it is needed because it uh, any data or instruction that has to be processed by the cpu uh, is first brought into the primary memory and then it is either read by the cpu or sometimes the cpu also writes things to the memory okay and you must remember that we are talking here of a temporary storage all right we'll also study about rom in detail in further lectures and i'll tell you why uh, rom and ram what are the basic uses of it uh, in uh, when you boot a system and so on so as of now uh, the second important thing is the basic unit of memory they are the binary digits known as zero and ones which are also known as bits and when you group these bits they form a word and depending upon the number of bits present in each word different names have been given 
a nibble is defined as 4 bits, 8 bits define 2 nibbles that means 1 byte and uh, the higher forms of standardization. So I have written these in the form of short notes that you can uh, pause the video and copy it down or note it down so that uh, in case you need to jot down the summarization or main points for this uh, particular section you have this handy okay. So in the next video we will be studying in detail about computer system further in uh, as provided in your chapter. So till then if you like the video please uh, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that when I upload the further videos you get a notification and you do not miss any video okay. So see you in the next lecture till then mind your exam.